Good morning, gentlemen. So I just opened YouTube this morning after a good weekend out in nature and saw what I can just describe is the latest in, in a series of escalations in a really, really bad reality TV show. So this is, of course, the Trump assassination attempt. And the core message that I want to share with this video is to tell people and remind them your politicians cannot save you. In fact, they are a really big part of this distraction from a really sick form of, I can only just call it entertainment now, like a reality TV show of the destruction of a society, not just of the United States, although that's where the epicenter is of course happening, but this is really about Western civilization to a certain extent. And so it's very possible that this series of escalations and this collapse cannot be stopped. But that just even more underlines the need for really taking a step back now, seeing the bigger picture and making sure that we're not ourselves adding fuel to the fire. Because there is a judgment coming and you want to make sure that you're not headed off on the overside of a cliff right now as well. So what's needed right now is to start thinking about how we can be healing divisions to just turn down the drama and all of the escalations happening and be able to reach out and to be able to create unity again against this fragmentation and collapse and polarization that's happening. And this doesn't mean that we need to compromise on the truth. Certainly it requires that we don't join in on the lie. But we do need to understand that we need to stop the polarization happening. So what this means is that if you are a cause of offense of other people yourself, then you really need to be thinking about how to be able to turn that down and being a little bit more attentive and respectful towards other human beings. We don't believe that an abstract truth should ever trump uh, or ever trump should ever take precedence over actual human relationships. So human relationships are always nuanced and difficult to understand. And there's often just communication problems, seeing things from different perspectives, getting our information from different sources that as at the root, most people are trying to figure out what's right. A lot of us are just very, very distracted and taking a lot of information that's not so good for us. And if you yourself are offended about somebody, then try and step back and try and just take a little bit of a time out and don't have to solve everything at the same time. Right now, our political discourse and our societal discourse is really driven by a spirit of indignation. We're all offended and indignant about all the wrongs and evils that we've been seeing around us in the world. Even though we're living at a time with more material abundance and comfort, I would even say luxury for the vast majority of people living in Western civilization than has ever been. Most of us live, no, all of us pretty much live at a standard far above even royalty just 200 years ago or 400 years ago. We're incredibly comfortable in our lives and we're all so absolutely indignant about all of the injustices that are constantly pumped into our attention uh, from all over the place. So what we need to do is to start with our neighbors, not trying to think about, you know, the global problems and how, you know, everything else uh, in, at like the national level, whatever it is, the big, big ideological issues. Most of us, we need to start within our own sphere of influence. And so this is really your brother, your uncle, a colleague at work, someone who you feel that you have this feeling of distrust, disconnection with, there's a polarization, and being able to understand how to reach out to these people. We start with our neighbors. What does it mean to be a neighbor? Well, Christ told us the story of the Good Samaritan. Samaritans and Jews were, of course, sworn enemies. <laughs> so your neighbor is also your ideological opponent. It doesn't need to be a person who's just the same, has the same beliefs as you, like-minded or whatever it is. So we need to be able to step back and just take a little moment out of here, see how the spirit of indignation is really just causing so much destruction. Things have been escalating ever since basically, you know, before Trump was elected. In fact, you know, I myself, I was standing actually on Times Square when Obama came to power the first time. I'd been over in the United States to uh, help campaign for the first Obama election. 
And, you know, we really had this belief myself and my, my you know, I, I was there with my family and we believed like, no, everything's going to be different now. It's all going to change. Um, and, you know, this, this politician has, is going to be our salvation somehow. And I more and more come to realize, you know, what's really happening is these beliefs that a politician can save us is actually just leading to this pendulum swinging further and further each side. You know, so Obama, a lot of people really believed and changed and hoped that Obama was going to bring. But there was a certain group of people that were pushed out and seen as, no, these are like, you know, the unwanted people, the undesirables. And so these people, they, of course, got angry. And that's what then gave us uh, Trump coming in. He was, you know, totally um, ridiculed and, and as were these people also ridiculed and seen as ridiculous and so then then these people of course got upset and that's how then we got Trump and Trump is of course then what gave us Biden because then the power elites they saw like oh no like this is terrible we need to do something about it and and so they pulled out all the stops basically pretty much any tactic uh, and and then Biden got into got into power and and so this is just escalating and the, and the pendulum swinging further and further and it's time that we need to slow things down and that's going to start in our own personal sphere of influence our own personal lives to not be buying into this big drama story but being able to just stand firm and look at it how we're dealing with this in our own personal lives with our own families and other people that are around us so you know truth is truth and we don't need to compromise on truth but truth without love is just a clanging symbol. It's just the facts. And the facts aren't what's going to save us now as well. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, and please add a like to this message or to this video if you think that this is uh, uh, useful and you found it uh, good for you to listen to. And add a comment, of course, that really helps for the YouTube algorithm, even if it's just to say uh, thanks for the message. Okay, and ask questions, add your opinion. It'd be great to hear from you as well. So thanks very much.